Hello, and welcome to Seed World's strategy webinar. Today, we'll dive into the topic of advanced seed coatings and polymers and explore what companies are doing to advance seed coatings and polymers and key factors driving the industry. Additionally, you'll get perspective from two industry leaders and have the opportunity to ask questions. My name is Julie Deering. Some of you know me as the editor of Seed World, but today I'll be serving as your moderator. First, I'd like to thank our sponsor, BASF, for their support. And a few housekeeping items to note. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on SeedWorld.com following the event. For audio, for audio quality purposes, all microphones have been muted with the exception of speakers. If you have a question or comment, please share them in the chat box and I'll make note of them. As part of our agenda, we'll first take a look at the issues of dust off and abrasion. Then we'll take into consideration the need to use fewer chemicals and what impact this has for the seed treatment industry. From there, we'll tr transition and ask our speakers to provide their perspective on the future of seed coatings and polymers. And then we'll open it up for 10 minutes for a question and answer session with our speakers. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first speaker is Ben Joe, who serves as Global Product Manager for Seed Coatings within BASF's Functional Crop Care Business Unit. In this role, Ben is responsible for the performance and development of the global seed colorants and coatings business and works with colleagues around the world in sales, marketing, research and development, and manufacturing. Ben joined BASF in 2011 as a member of the Leadership Development Program where he spent time in marketing, project management, and new business development. He sits on the American Seed Trade Association's Corn and Sorghum Seed Research Conference Planning Committee. And then we'll hear from Terry Meyer who serves as Global Manager for Incotech's new product development. Terry joined Incotech in 2013 as Research Manager for North American Field Crops. With a 30-year career in agriculture, Terry has made numerous contributions, including the development of Herculex insect control. He received his PhD from Iowa State University in 1987 and completed an MBA program through the Cranert Center at Purdue University in 2000. Then in 2007, he received the Floyd Andre Award by the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at Iowa State University for his contributions to agriculture. Let's dive on in. The issue concerning dust off and abrasion of seed treatments, especially those within neo, with neonicotinoids, continue to make headlines as it relates to the environment and pollinators. These concerns have gotten the attention of policymakers here in the U.S. and around the world, and many research projects are underway by both public and private organizations. As we look at the issue of dust off and abrasion, what role do seed coatings and polymers play, and what's the latest research and product development in this area? Ben, let's start with you. Great. Thank you very much, Julie, for the introduction and for hosting uh, this event. Thanks to Terry for, for joining me as well. It's a pleasure to speak to all of you, and I'm excited to share with, with you some of our um, thoughts, our research, and um, really our beliefs about seed coatings and, and the opportunities that lie here in this market space. To start off, this first section, we'll talk about dust off and abrasion um, and really talk about there the role of seed coatings, what is some of the latest research with regard to seed coatings, um, and what kind of products, what advanced products do we have to retain these active ingredients. Um, it's, and to start, really, I think it's important when you talk about dust off and coatings in general to really think about what is driving those discussions, what's driving the marketplace. And for me, there's three key things here. First and foremost is regulatory pressure on insecticides. I think that's something that we're all familiar with. It's certainly not a new conversation, um, but we all know that there's been a lot of pressure on these products in the environment, <clears throat> and we need to make sure that we are handling them safely and properly. That's certainly one aspect, so as far as implications goes, product stewardship is certainly now much more a driver for seed companies and ag agrochemical manufacturers, and it continues to be so. But from another perspective, I think it's important to think about how we find additional ways to improve the or increase the efficiency and the efficient, efficacy and efficiency of use of the products as well. So there's a product stewardship perspective of, on that as well as a, a use and a efficiency of use perspective as well. Second, we talk about seed space and loading, right? So um, more and more stuff, you know, is being applied to the seed at higher rates and a complexity and with increasing complexity of mixtures, right? So we see more mixing of three, four, or five way different products, insecticides, fungicides, uh, biologicals, inoculants, you know, the, the, the total package is becoming more complex and the rates are 
becoming higher. <clears throat> so AI, re so the retention of these these inputs is really a challenge from an application standpoint. So that certainly drives the, d the dust off um, discussion as well, just from a practical standpoint of how do you apply uh, well everything that ne we need to put on the seed. Third, we talk about the seed market in general. We see, of course, you know, local or I'm sorry, late later trends notwithstanding of what we see in the marketplace. But seed values are high, uh, historically speaking, and we see increasing hybridization of crops such as wheat and rice, and we see more and more technology in seeds, which means that all stakeholders throughout the value chain, whether it be seed companies, um, agrochemical manufacturers, seed treatment manufacturers, growers, retailers looking for ways to protect investment, looking for innovation in products. And so coatings <clears throat> certainly will play a role uh, when it comes to that as well. And so while I think the dust off um, discussion is certainly very, very important and, and central to the, to the conversation when it comes to coatings, I think it's also important that um, there is an opportunity for the role of the coating to in expand as well. So if we look historically at, back at how these products have developed and how we see them developing going forward, um, you know, it started off as a means of adhesion, right? So we, look, we talked about polymers as a way to apply active ingredients to improve aesthetics, right, you know, over on the left. <clears throat> and then we talk now about the retention of those active ingredients and the, the prevention of dust. Right? But I think going forward, really, where, we're, we're, where I see a lot of opportunity for these products um, is when we talk about this, the flow of the, the seeds through the planter, how these products improve accuracy of planting, population management, um, and things of this nature. And then even beyond that, how do these products interact with the other inputs, the chemistries, the biologicals, to improve loading management? How do they, they affect the efficacy of these other components? <clears throat> what is their role themselves in, in early seed growth? And so you can really start talking about these products as, you know, what are their role in improving seed performance in and of themselves? So um, I think we are seeing a shift from the, in the view in the marketplace from coatings being seen as, you know, very much an input and a really in relation to the seed itself as a as a as an aesthetic as a, a binder a sticker if, if you will to more as a technology you know and we certainly at BSF view that these products are vital technologies that really do help seeds interact with their environment when it comes to some of the new research for coatings uh, like I said we, we now are looking at what are the impacts of these products in and of themselves on the early growth of seed and here's you know a nice visual to show um, how seed coatings can improve um, early growth early stand um, in under stressful planting conditions so we have some soybeans here that were stressed under cold and we have um, a, a developmental product of ours here that shows, you know, you can see very clearly on the right where there's an improvement in the early seed growth of the product going forward. So there's a lot of research here going on at BSF about what is happening um, and again how is this coating affecting the seed, how is it interacting with the environment around it and, and improving the early seed performance. In terms of what products we have uh, at BSF to, to mitigate dust to improve AI retention. We have a wide range uh, across a, you know, a number of uh, crops uh, in every region. Um, but we'd really like to focus here on our Flowrite brand, which is our, which is our flagship, which we really feel has um, a, a really great balance between the appearance, the flowability, plantability, and AI retention. So what is Flowrite? It is a, an advanced polymer-based technology combining adhesion properties with, ex with exceptional seed flow. And I think an important point for us here at BSF is that you'll, uh, you'll notice that I don't refer to these products as polymers. For us, the polymer is a, an input into the final product. For us, these are coatings and coating technologies. Um, but again, Flowrite is it's compatible with major fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, inoculants, colorants. Um, it is water-based and uh, with low viscosity, it's washable, it's neutral pH, so it's, it's, it's very safe. 
Um, and the tagline for us is delivering on the promise of the seed. <clears throat> You'll notice that based on our studies, we see about a 41% better volume flow when it comes to seed flow. Um, we have a couple different flow rate products in the marketplace now uh, across the, uh, these different crops. We have 1197 for corn and wheat, 1706 for soybeans, uh, beans, and peas, and then 5330 for cotton. And then again, back to the air retention in the dust off piece. <clears throat> flow rate really does a really nice job of keeping everything that's applied on the seed. So you can see here very clearly um, the comparison between uh, seeds that are, do not have coating versus those that have our flow rate 1197 at uh, a couple different rates there. Um, and you can see very clearly that, that the flow rate does a really nice job of really keeping everything on the seed where it belongs. So with that, um, I will turn it over back to Julie, and uh, unless there's any questions. Great. Thanks, Ben. And Terry, I understand that Incotech is doing research in this area with an eye toward um, product development as well. Tell me about your research and what you're working on. Th thanks, Julie, uh, Ben, and the audience for the opportunity to share a bit about what uh, the world of feed seed treatments and, and how we can improve those, to bring new technologies, and try to help productivity in the world. I also take this moment for all those who are in the midst of harvest in North America to wish you a safe season and to say thanks for helping feed the world. So Incotech has a long history starting in 1963 with film coating technologies. We um, did some work done in the Netherlands by Mr. David Dirks. Uh, pioneered really how seed, you could take seeds and coatings on those. So there's a long history and understanding. But over the decades, the technology has continued to evolve and improve. And um, along with the modern uh, need for more productivity. Uh, Incotech has research, um, about 100 researchers scattered around the world, and production sites also located around the world. So we're focused on many different crops and many of the different challenges, either from insects, diseases, or just general yield and nutri uh, nutritional, plant nutritional um, value. And so we have a staff focused on uh, the many many different areas of agriculture trying to improve productivity, particularly field crops, vegetables, and ornamentals, and we also have an analytical service. Particularly with seed treatments, there are a number of ways to get the coatings and, and the various uh, treat and treatments put on. Uh, with uh, encrustment, for example, it's one type of applying materials to the surface of seeds, and with encrustment, uh, it's another way to uh, apply additional of the kinds of insecticides, fungicides, nutrients, nematicides, and other materials that need to go on a typical treatment. And the value of encrustment is that it allows uh, additional space to apply more of these variety of uh, uh, materials that are being added um, to the farm productivity programs. And it also offers a way to improve how the seeds handle. So really small seeds sometimes need, you can add some size or weight to them, maybe 100 fold increase in weight. Uh, it's easier to handle some of the really tiny seeds or it might improve the shape of the seeds just for plantability. Uh, it's easier to work and move the seeds through the planter and get more uh, even distribution of the seed out in the fields. Um, and between encrusting and traditional film coating, um, you can all, um, the industry is demanding lower dust release in the environment uh, from these and uh, of course we want to deliver the, the material so it stays on the seed and uh, the plant can get the full value of the treatment. And so uh, as shown here, we have examples of corn, oilseed rape or canola, sunflower, soybeans, rice. Uh, we also treat wheat. and in general, the film coating is really just putting those plant protective products, the PPPs, onto the seed, um, doing it with safety, uh, improving the seed to seed distribution so you get even treatment and even a impact on the plants, uh, can optimize the release and really reduce the, the amount of dust that's involved. Incotech has more than 250 formulations, uh, can provide tailor made and specialty formulations as well. At the end, it needs to be recognized that this is one of the tools. We, um, and Incotech does not actually develop the 
insecticides, fungicides, and other such materials, but we work very hard to stay current with those technologies and test for compatibility so that they go. Uh, there's a lot of testing that goes in to make sure that the materials uh, will indeed go on properly under various different temperature treating conditions, different humidities, and, and stay and uh, provide the level of protection or quality of product delivery required. And I guess that will be the last slide for, for this moment for me. As we look to our second key driver, the need to use fewer chemicals, which is increasing demand for seed treatments, we are conflicted with the limited space available on the seed. Ben, what are we putting on the seed right now? So right now, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a wide range of products that go on the seed for seed treatment, anything from fungicides, uh, insecticides, uh, nematicides, and then more recently inoculants and now uh, biologicals, uh, as well as colorants. Um, and you know the specific combinations, these are all available today depending on growers' need. Um, so it's, you know, depending on the region, the country, the crop, there are certainly uh, unique mixtures in the marketplace, but by and large this is the main categories of products that we're applying. Great. And Terry, what, I think you touched upon this a little bit already in your previous slides, um, but what are companies doing to make more space on the seed? So um, yes, the encrustments allow for example increased uh, capacity to put materials in the seed but also uh, the technologies we're working on are uh, in dramatically doing a couple of things one dramatically reducing the amount of dust by depending on the crop twofold to tenfold versus current best on the market materials and and, and even better as well as improving f flow and plantability but at the same time we're conscious of the various um, treatments that need to go on so we're looking at capacity so uh, that is if the film coat uh, material can be used at a lower dose it takes up less of the total slurry that's applied to the seed you can have that space to put on additional uh, and valuable disease or nutrient kinds of uh, treatments for example okay and Ben are you guys doing anything unique to try to make more space or create more space on the seed yeah, I think we look at this really in uh, three different ways. And um, first and foremost, as Terry mentioned, you know, we always look at the the rates of use of the products themselves, and then coating is a, as in particular. We can always improve on the rate at which we apply the coating uh, and add as little as possible to the seed treatment slurry. So that's certainly one, and I think we've done that pretty successfully, and we continue to do it. Uh, second of all, I think also by improving AI retention itself, you create space. So I think it's, when we say space, I think it's, it's important to be clear what we mean. For us, that doesn't mean necessarily the physical space or the physical surface area on a particular seed, but more so the seed's capacity to hold treatment, right? So how much, uh, you know, quote unquote stuff can you put on a particular seed? So from that perspective, AI retention itself also does create some space, right? So the better you can hold things on, the more you can put on, if that makes sense. And then third, and um, maybe, maybe most importantly, I think we take a very holistic approach to the seed treatment package. So of course, the rates of the individual products themselves are, are very important, and the AI retention that the coding provides is very important, but also, as important, if not more so, is looking at the total package. You know, and here at BSF, we have a very unique um, opportunity to create a uh, a seed treat a total seed treatment package from chemicals, biologicals, inoculants. And it's about what does that total package look like? What is the rate um, of that total package? Not just of each particular uh, individual component, but by having the ability to play with a complete formulation, a complete solution you're able to provide and find ways to save space with that total package, if that makes sense. So in, in a sense, instead of saying sometimes um, the sum is more than the, the, I'm sorry, the total is more than the sum of its parts, in some ways when we talk about rates and space, when, you, when we are able to look across the entire breadth of the portfolio, we can say that sometimes the sum is less than the um, total of its individual parts, if that makes sense. I might just add one point. Uh, I agree with what Ben's saying there. Uh, 
Another thing that we're working on actively and finding success that I think is going to help for the future is some of the film code materials have um, limited ability to um, release some of the active ingredients, the PPPs, but we found ways to improve on that so we can actually drive higher release, that is, and create. So if you put on um, a, a kind of 100 units of a particular active ingredient, um, do you get the full 100 units of efficacy or is, or is the seed treatment limiting that to some smaller fraction? And so we found ways to get and maximize the full release and capture that value. That's So your effective potency and uh, impact on the plant is, is um, done at much lower dose rates. Great. Thanks for that addition, Terry. And uh, um, whether it's uh, film coating or encrusting um, or making sure that uh, what we're putting on the seed sticks better um, with that those active ingredients. Um, what does this mean from an equipment and handling standpoint and how are your respective companies as well as the industry as a whole working with equipment um, providers to make sure that uh, they're keeping up to pace with the changes that are happening on your end? Yeah, I think from an equipment, equipment and handling standpoint, when it related directly to the application of seed treatment, um, I think you see, you know, there there's opportunity for improvements. I think there's opportunity for for things like dryer decks to be more um, to play a greater role in terms of application of seed treatment to, you know, really facilitate the drying and thereby the retention and and uh, flowability of the seed. Um, but more so, I think for BSF, we really look to to work as efficiently as possible for to make our products work with the equipment that we have um, that's existing, right? So, as much as we can improve um, AI retention, as much as we can improve rates and seed flow characteristics of our coatings products, that obviously then in turn does uh, help facilitate the use of equipment that's out there in the marketplace. It helps uh, drive innovations with in terms of uh, planters, in terms of treaters. So for example, one thing I think, you know, as you improve seed flow, you you provide the opportunity for growers and for seed, seed planter manufacturers to look at higher, faster planting uh, speeds and, and without losing accuracy. So things of this nature, I think, is, is how I would say we relate uh, to our equipment manufacturers. Thanks, Ben. Terry, do you have anything to add there? Well, you we need, uh, when we're doing our work, we go through a lot of different tests, one of which is putting the seeds, the treated seeds, and testing the various seed treatment possibilities before we uh, launch them commercially. We, we test with various equipment and try to look at the flow of the treated seeds, uh, make sure both at the production and treatment site that it flows well, but also on farm with the planters, uh, and yet still retains excellent coverage, good eye appeal um, that uh, you get if you think you're going to get one seed per certain amount of space in the row that you get that and not something more or less um, and then it's easy to use with a with stable shelf life so um, the materials at the end uh, go on the seed uh, at various humidities and temperatures uh, we need we we work to test some of that so that when it gets in the planter in the farmer's hands um, they they can trust it'll be robust to the conditions they're using Great. We all know that uh, precision is more important than ever uh, for farmers, and it sounds like we're certainly making progress in that area. So now let's turn our focus to the future. We'll take a look at how formulations that have biologicals differ from some of the more traditional chemistries and any special requirements that there might be for those formulations, and then what new products or formulations that your companies are working on. So uh, Terry, we'll go ahead and start with you. Okay, thanks. Um, so we're in this particular slide, we're looking at uh, application of various biological organisms. It could be rhizobium, bacillus. Um, there are other um, living organisms that need to go on the plant and that actually help either, they're, they're beneficial to the plant um, and they um, can provide stress protection or some sort of new micronutrient or that or metabolite that otherwise the plant doesn't have access to. So we're testing that our formulations provide um, the efficacy that's expected of these new uh, kinds of biologicals. 
and also it needs to be compatibility. So we're testing for shelf life and storage. So if you mix these living organisms, now it's no longer just a chemistry or chemical, but it's living organisms. We test that when we mix them together, they will be viable for an extended period of time so that the person mixing up the materials, uh, the biologicals and the film coating, can put them in, it will survive. Uh, you can put it, apply it to the seed. And then, you know, the farmer may plant within hours or days, or sometimes it could be weeks or months or even up to a year later if the seed is stored. So we've got to look and we do try to track the, the viability of those um, biologicals uh, as well as uh, germination quality, which we assess and make sure that seeds are viable at the end. I think that, you know, captures uh, enough on that point. And uh, um, Ben, did you have anything uh, to add to that section uh, with regards to how formulations differ from, um, I guess, differ when they include biologicals versus your more traditional uh, chemistries? Yeah, I think Terry covered it pretty well. I would say that, yeah, absolutely, you need to look when it's when it comes to coatings, you certainly need to test in, in terms of combat compatibility as well as uh, on seed survival. How do the coatings products uh, affect the life of the biological on the seed, right? So um, ideally you want to extend that life as long as possible. In terms of formulation, I think obviously uh, as biologicals are living organisms, you, you have to make sure that all inputs, all materials that, that are being used are non-toxic to those uh, organisms. So, for example, uh, you don't want anything that's, you know, sidal, obviously, but also when it go, you don't want to be putting anything in that might desiccate the, the organisms, uh, for example. So, um, I don't think anything too too crazy in terms of what's what special considerations, other than making sure that your products extend the life of those biologicals as long as possible, and that they themselves are non-toxic uh, to those biologicals. And is um, BASF working on any new products or formulations in that area? Yes, I, I have a couple slides here that I could show you for uh, the future. We see a great opportunity here with coatings uh, with regard to biologicals and coatings themselves. And so before I get too far into the history or into the future, I'd like to take a look at some history for some for some lessons, right? And maybe to have a little bit of fun. So uh, if you consider, in 2007, Apple launched uh, what we all know, I'm sure, as the iPhone. And um, <clears throat> one of the most revolutionary products, of course, of, of our time. I'm pretty sure most of us here on this call have either this, some descendant of it, some descendant of it, or sort of some derivative, uh, perhaps, uh, an Android device. Uh, so we're all very familiar with it, right? I would challenge you all to think about what the uh, mo the best-selling phone was in 2006, the year prior that Apple launched. And I know that this is not a. Um, I'll just give you 10 seconds or so to think about it before I put the, uh, or maybe five in the interest of time. So it was actually this phone, the, the Nokia 1600. And you know, I think this is when you look back uh, and you put those two phones side by side. I think there's a couple lessons here. One is. I mean, just think about where we are today and look at that Nokia phone. Um, it seems a lot like a very, very far away, figuratively speaking, right? But also, if you consider how that, how much of a difference there is in that one year between 2006 and 2007, what a major step change in technology has occurred, right? Similarly. Uh, in 2008, a group of students at Carnegie Mellon were, were in a consulting competition and were asked to identify what they felt were the best opportunities for investment in the tech space, and they, they identified Twitter, and their valuation at the time was $10 million, okay, and they won um, a first place in this competition. In uh, 2013, this same company was traded for the first time on the New York Stock Exchange, and the valuation at the end of its first day of trading was 31, but not million, 31 billion. So um, what I think it speaks to is not only the speed at which this the market can move, but how much we can be off in our estimation about what is coming and what a technology might offer. Again, if you look at the Twitter example, you know, these students did a very good job in, in vetting out their valuation, 
as with the information they had available at the time, and yet they were, you know, how many orders of magnitude off in terms of what that company would be worth. Um, so going back to coatings, I think again there is an opportunity here for a huge, a, a large shift in our perception of what value these products bring and what kind of value they can bring. Um, and it's important for us to look back on history just to say that it is possible and for us to, to really consider and kind of rethink what we think about some of these technologies. So then, to be more concrete, what kind of things do we have new for the future? Um, first, we have a new product called Flowrite 3330 for AI retention. It is the next progression in our Flowrite line. Um, as you can see here, um, the 3330 on the right column, we've improved the AI retention of the product versus our previous um, by about 30-40% without changing the rate. So effectively, more retention at, a, at the same rate. right? Um, and this will be available for corn in 2016. It has been tested for compatibility with biologicals, um, and uh, we're really happy about, about bringing this product to the marketplace. Further on down the line, we have a product um, called Convenio in development, where we look for um, even greater uh, active ingredient retention. Um, but then also, again, as I mentioned earlier, looking at what are some of the implications of this coding product of on the uh, early agronomic growth of the, of the seed, right? So germination, the, the vigor, what is its effect in, in terms of how this, the, the seed's ability to fight off disease? Certainly not, cons not, not um, touting that a coating will be equivalent to a fungicide, but how does that coating help and complement that fungicide in terms of doing its job? Um, so we're doing a lot of exciting research there, and we're still going to offer, it will still offer the best-in-class seed flow and plant ability that, that you know, has really been flagship of our flow right line. And on the right there, you can see a couple pictures from some of our early testing with, with the Convenio product. Um, as you can see, it's really nice in terms of the uh, early seed growth. And again, when it comes to retention, if you look at the planter discs there below, um, it, we're getting really, 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 really um, to the point where we can keep a very, very, very large percentage of, of the seed treatment on the seed where it belongs. So that would be the two, th those are the two things in our pipeline that we're really excited about. Great. Thanks, Ben. Um, Terry, I'd also like to get your perspective on um, the future and uh, um, any new product formulations that uh, Incotech is working on. Um, do you have any slides that you'd like to share in this, in this area? I won't actually show slides specifically, but I'll just speak to the fact that, again, as I mentioned earlier, we're um, actually achieving improvements with some new um, near commercial materials that for film coating are, if you pick your crop, are lowering dust, uh, you know, the amount of material lost or flip it around retention, the amount of material retained on the seed, um, by twofold to tenfold versus current commercial products. So um, not, not even part of that, but two, twofold to tenfold uh, reduction in dust. So uh, it's a big change from where things have been and also looking at uh, improving the flow ability for the plant planting and uh, good good shelf stability and, and, and uh, quicker dry down uh, of the materials. So nutshell, I think we, the, the future looks bright that there are some new technologies that are, will be meeting the need. And I know uh, that on soybeans and some other kinds of crops, there's an increasing demand for by certain customers to pr provide um, larger slurry treatment rates and in order to encompass all of the um, protective products and nutrients that have to go on, um, some of our film coats we're testing are uh, meeting that demand as well. So what's the ability to help glue on to those seeds, um, the, the material that's needed? We're, we're, we're getting there. Great. Thanks, the Terry. And uh, one last question before we wrap up our section uh, looking to the future. Ben, why is continued investment in this area important? Well, I think it goes back to some of those drivers that I mentioned early on where we're talking about, there's obviously, again, a lot of regulatory pressure on, on a lot of our agrochemical um, products. Uh, there's a lot of issues when it comes to loading of uh, seed, the complexity of mixtures that are going on, and the challenges that presents when it comes to application um, while maintaining the seed flow. 
And then three, uh, like I said, seed treatment and, and uh, the seed industry uh, continues to see a lot of technology. And so coatings needs to keep up with all this. We need to address all those challenges, whether it's, it's stewardship, um, whether it's efficacy of the product, to enable some of these complex mixtures to uh, help us retain all this stuff on the seed. You know, there's, there's a whole lot there and a lot of area to improve and how coatings can, um, again, be a, ma a big contributor in all of those areas, I think really points to the need to continue improving and continue investing uh, in that segment. Great. No, there's a, a lot of opportunity for growth. And I think, uh, as you said, you know, research will continue. Um, Terry, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Right. I'd like to uh, uh, share two, my last two slides here, if that's okay. Sure, absolutely. As an industry, we need such new and improved seed treatments that we've talked about today and technologies to address the challenges as shown here. Um, arable land is decreasing. We have increasing population. World population recently hit 7 billion and not far in the future is predicted to hit 9 billion. There will not be any measurable new acres or hectares for farming. And so we need to improve the ag technologies and competencies that are available. Um, and the, the, on this slide, in closing, uh, we need to provide for consistent products that work across many conditions that are in there, uh, that the ag industry has for treatment and environmental treats, seed treatment. Um, we need to provide so that there's the highest, the widest um, technology ability. Uh, need to invest in research for a strong future product line and develop extremely innovative technologies to meet the challenges of the new biologicals and other kinds of plant um, um, growth promotion technologies that are coming in the pipeline and that we have views on. So that's uh, the end of the slides that I had to share. Thanks for the opportunity, Julie. And Ben, nice to visit with you. I turn it back to you, Julie. Great. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, we are bumping up against our, our timeline, so and I promised earlier that we'd go ahead and open it up for question and answer session, so we'll go ahead and do that now. As I stated at the beginning, uh, please type any questions you have into the chat box and we'll make sure our speakers um, have an opportunity to answer them. Um, we do have a couple um, questions that have come in, and so I'll go ahead and ask those. Um, the first question is from Jeff, and it's directed to Ben. Um, were the pictures that you showed in relation to the dust-off and abrasion issue a buildup of coating or a seed slurry treatment? That, that would be, thanks for the qu question, was it Jeff? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Um, that would be, yes, you're right, it would be the buildup of the full treatment not just the coating, right? And we do a lot of work now actually looking at what is the, comp uh, the composition of that dust, of what's coming off onto the, uh, d the planter, onto the discs. So, um, but that, what I did show was the entire seed, seed treatment slurry. Okay. Thanks, Ben. And then the next question is also addressed to you as well. Are BASF colorants EPA listed for exemptions? By exemption, you mean not as a, I assume that means in terms of registration. Right now, as, as of now, b colorants and coatings are not uh, required to be registered by the EPA. Uh, all our products are CFR 40 uh, compliant uh, in the U.S., yeah. And so, right, but we don't require any registration from the EPA for those products, so no exemptions are required. That's answer the question. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. And then um, Jose asked, in humid countries, we need products that dry in a short time. Do you have some improvements in this way? And so, um, Ben, I'll let you start and then um, give Terry the opportunity to answer that question as well. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, absolutely, we do look at that right now. There's a lot of, especially now in Brazil, right? So it's a, it's a huge seed treatment market and it's obviously very humid and warm. So right now the way uh, a lot of that is handled is through the use of, of drying powders. But we are looking at how we can improve our flow rights, for example, or our coatings in general in terms of rates and in terms of uh, retention and flowability to mitigate the use of some of those as well and to enable the, the, 
the faster drying and, and um, application of those products. So it's certainly a, on the radar for us, absolutely, for sure. Thanks, Ben. And uh, Terry, uh, are you guys doing work in that area as well? Absolutely. We have some materials that we're very excited about that um, they're Incotech Discos, the film code's called Discos, um, the candidates that uh, we were bringing to our customers for testing uh, actually have faster drying and selected for all the other qualities that I mentioned earlier, significantly lower dust, um, close to zero dust in many cases, uh, and depending on the crop, um, better abrasion resistance and things like that, but also faster drying, and so you have lower packing coming out of the treater, lower clumping of the seeds, and then that translates into better handling and plantability. Great. And I had another question come in, um, and it was asked by Andrew, and it's to Ben. In the first section of your presentation, you mentioned keeping everything on the seed as it belongs. Can we assume that when flow right chemistry is in the treatment mix, there will be zero dust off? So that's a great question. Obviously, you know, we, we're working towards that zero, zero dust, of course, yeah. Right now, we're getting pretty close, um, but certainly there's still improvements that can be made. Um, but we're as far as what's practically, uh, practically possible at the moment, we are pretty close to zero, I would say, but not, we're certainly not there yet. That's something we're working towards. Great. And then Sergio asks, is, is it anything that can be done from the coating polymer side to keep soybean rhizobium alive on the seed for more time? So we've, we've seen a lot of, this has been here, we've seen a lot of benefit from the use of extender technology. Uh, in, this, in the slurry to help improve the, the survivability of the rhizobia, especially when it gets, again, down into the warm, humid climates such as South America. So that's certainly one. And again, with regard to coatings, we continue to look at how those coatings will improve and affect the, the, the life of those rhizobia as well. And then the last question that we have time for today um, is from Robert. and. Uh, um, in times where basically everything is going green, how about biodegradation of coatings and polymers? And, and that one's an open question as well. So I'm, I'm happy to take that question, Julie. This is Terry. Sure. So, so yeah, some of our new candidates have those kinds of uh, bio, biodegradable or biologically um, safe kinds of, uh, or well, all of ours are, are safe. But in terms of the biodegradation, um, some of our coding candidates uh, follow that, that path. And so we're excited about what they mean, uh, as well as, you know, hitting the lower dust and abrasion, um, the flowability, and the cosmetics and coverage. Um, so we're, we're paying attention to that, definitely. I know these are all important um, questions and issues, and I know companies are doing a lot of work on um, making improvements and uh, investing resources in this area. Um, that's all the time we've got for today. I want to thank both of our speakers, Ben of BASF and Terry of Incotech, Incotech for making time in their busy schedules to share their insight and expertise with us here today. And again, a big thank you to our sponsor, BASF, for their support. I also want to quickly thank my team working behind the scenes for their dedication to making this a successful and informative event. Thank you to our viewers uh, for your attention. Um, and uh, this presentation, again, will be made available online at seedworld.com. Thanks for your attention. And on behalf of our team here at Seed World, we hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much, Julie, for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thanks, Julie, and the audience, and may your yields be good and your day end safely. <laughs>